Yesterday, we covered the top productivity applications for Android, but what about iOS? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and these are the top five productivity applications for iOS. Yesterday, I covered the top five productivity applications for Android, and truthfully, this topic is a bit more interesting on that platform since the possibilities are virtually endless, and a large portion of the great productivity apps on iOS are ones we've heard of a million times already. However, I did some digging and found some both unique and awesome productivity apps for iOS. First is LastPass. I felt the need to include LastPass in this top 5 as well as the Android video because I don't go a single day without using LastPass dozens of times. I can't live without it on Android and likewise on iOS. LastPass is essentially a vault where I keep every password for every online service I use. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, a dozen Gmail accounts, my bank accounts, and everything in between and I don't even know the vast majority of my passwords as I randomly generate them when I create the accounts. To use LastPass, simply log in, find the account you want, tap it, select copy password, and paste it into the application you need to log into. The LastPass application is free to download, but it requires a premium account to use via mobile, which is only $12 per year. It's also practically totally cross-platform with availability on Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer, Opera, Firefox, Mac OS, Windows, Linux, iOS, Android, Windows Phone, and Blackberry. The next application is one I found in my search last night. It's called 3030 and it does something I've been meaning to implement in my professional life for months now. Split my day into efficient time blocks to increase stamina, focus, and productivity. Countless studies have shown that working with intent for a stretch of time followed by a short break increases awareness and productivity. Different people operate on different internal clocks and schedules and that's what makes 3030 so great. You can set a schedule for your entire day in short time blocks. I've chosen 45 minute increments of intense work, followed by a 15 minute break, where I read, watch videos, and chat. I have the timer set to repeat until I end the loop, but you can also create preset timers, maybe one for your workout, one for studying, and one for work. Whatever helps you stay focused the most. I've been trying it out today, and so far I'm loving it. Best of all, it's completely free. Continuing in that same vein, I now need a calendar to help keep me on task and remind myself of everything I have to do. Before, I hated dealing with calendars. The process of creating an event was, and still very much is, with normal calendars, annoying. Fantastical not only has a beautiful and easy to follow UI, it has natural language input for calendar entry. Instead of creating an entry for go to the grocery store, then manually setting the time, I simply write go to the grocery store at five for an hour. The event is created with a proper time block. It seems like such a small feature, but after using it, it's difficult to go back to the old way of creating calendar entries. But not only that, it means I can dictate calendar entries within Fantastical with proper time blocks. You can dictate calendar entries to Siri or Google Now, but the process is much more convoluted and requires multiple steps. Fantastical 2 is currently on sale for $1.99 in the App Store, but normally sells for $4.99. Another application for iOS is a service I use for many different things. If this, then that. If This Then That is an online task automation service where you create recipes which pair mostly unrelated services. First you pick the this part of the recipe. Say you choose Twitter and you choose a new favorite tweet by you as the trigger. For the that portion of the equation, you choose pocket with the save for later action. Now when you favorite a tweet, it's automatically saved in your pocket account. This is only one of the thousands of examples. I have a recipe set up to send me a text message when someone uploads a photo to an Instagram account I help manage, and a notification to be sent to me when a new Craigslist ad is added with my search criteria. Within the free app, you can browse other people's recipes for ideas, create your own recipes, and see all the successfully triggered actions in your own stream. It's a very helpful tool to have in your belt if you're into an online service lifting some of the load off your shoulders. Finally, Goodreader. Goodreader was actually one of the first applications I ever bought on iOS when I picked up the original iPad. At its core, it's a PDF viewer, except it's on a whole lot of steroids and brings some much needed functionality to iOS, namely a quasi file system. You can download files by directly pasting the download link in the download field, or you can browse the web with the internal browser. You can zip and extract files and much, much more. You can annotate PDFs, and you can sync with remote servers or services like Dropbox, Box, SkyDrive, Google Drive, etc. Just know this isn't a document editor, but you can move files into Goodreader for storage and then open them in an app like Google Drive to edit. If you're looking for a decent local file management system for your iPad, Goodreader is a great start and the $4.99 price tag is definitely warranted. 
Folks, that's going to do it. If you enjoyed the video and want to help us out, click the thumbs up button below and leave a comment if we forgot one of your favorite productivity apps for iOS. Follow us in all the usual places, Twitter, Facebook, and Google+, and don't forget to subscribe. I'm Taylor Martin. You can find me on Twitter at CasperTech, and I will see you next time.